So lipids, we just completed. And I'm uploading the videos if you need to review anything. Or I'm also here in the morning and, you have to, and after school if you need help. But lipids, one interesting thing about lipids is that they, is that they are not polymers. They're not polymers. So uh, let's, t let's look at what those, that word means. Mono... Mer. What do you think mono means? One. one. And mer just means unit. So it's one unit. So a monomer is made is a single unit. So think of a Lego block. All right. Think of Lego blocks. And when you think of Lego blocks, you put a, a, a monomer is one single block. A polymer is what? Multiple. Multiple blocks. So polymers, when you take a bunch of these and put them together. All right, it's really not the greatest drawing. But you put a bunch of these together and what you get is you get something bunch of these together and you end up with some strange thing, right? It could be, uh, I don't know, a spaceship or it could be a dinosaur, it could be whatever, right? But Legos are really a good example of this because you can take one, you can have one single one and put them together and you can produce a polymer and these are different structures and the structures can have different functions. So if you want to make a crane, you can make a crane out of Legos, right? You can make robots out of Legos. Did you know that? There's this little Lego set that you can make robots with. And you can have robots that pinch things, robots that roll. Robot. Each one has different structures that help it do it. So this is a really great example of what monomers and polymers are like. Lipids don't have this property that you don't put them together to make bigger ones. Lipids are just long chains. Of, of, uh, of carbon and hydrogen, mostly. But the rest of the biomolecules, by the way, what are the rest of the biomolecules? Can we talk about what those four are? There's four of them. Go ahead. Uh, carbs, protein, and nucleic acid. Carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. Now, and of course you have lipids, but lipids, we already, we already said, hmm? nucleic acids. You, you'll, you'll recognize it. And you'll, you'll know, you know all, all of these. Lipids, you know them as fats, right? You know lipids. They're oils and fats, corn oil, uh, olive oil, fat and meat, uh, you know, you, butter. Those are fats. Those are lipids. What is, salt? What is the salt called? These are biomolecules. These are the molecules that make you up. They're the molecules that make up life. All life is made of these four types of molecules. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's, it's interesting. These three here, though, these three have monomers and polymers. These three have monomers and polymers. Uh, carbohydrates, and uh, you know them as sugars, right? Sugars, by the way, did you know you're sitting on sugar? Does everybody know you're, does everybody in this room, is anyone surprised to know 
that you are sitting on glucose, on the stuff that you eat. You know that white stuff you put in your, in your, in your cereal? No, sugar. You don't put, you don't put, I used to put sugar on top of my sugar. I, that's why I'm diabetic now. All right, so anyways, I don't drink any sugar now. But that white, that sugar in that bottle over there, it says sugar. If you poured it out, what color would it be? That stuff is the same thing that you're sitting on right now. It's made of, that the wood is made of sugar. You can't eat it, but termites can and fungi can. They have enzymes that can break it up. So what's the difference between the sugar you're sitting on and that sugar that's in that, that, that jar? Keep it in your mind because you're going to see that, that, that there is a difference. There's another thing that's made of sugar that's really interesting. You ever crush a bug? You ever see a beetle? Do you know there's shells made of sugar? No, no, just something. Your hair, your hair is made of protein. It's a long chain of proteins. Uh, your nails are made of proteins. Say what now? Wait, what? You thought our nail, the, there's dirt underneath the nail. Oh, oh, no, your nails, your nails are actually made of a protein that you produce. Actually, I think exoskeletons are not sugar, they're proteins. But I'll have to look at that, I can't remember. Yeah? I was going to say, like, is that what, is that like some people like to know, they need more No, no, that's just a nervous reaction. So, it just, it's interesting, so you got, you got proteins, so you know, pro, uh, you don't know what they are yet, but we're about to, I'm about to show you carbohydrates, proteins, and then nucleic acids, you know what this is too. You don't recognize it because they don't discuss it this way, yeah? Go ahead. Yeah. Shh. Shh. Go ahead. So these are the elements that are found, the majority of the elements found in each kind of, of biomolecule. And there's a really, the, all the elements together, it's easy to remember what all the, there's basically a very limited number of elements on the periodic table that all life uses repeatedly. Did you write all this down already? You look, always look like you're asleep, like half asleep, like... Do you ever notice that? Anybody ever tell you that? Am I the only person who's ever told you that? Wow. Okay. So I, I like to think of it as schnapps. Like the drink, yeah. Sh schnapps. Carbon and schnapps. N -n 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 but I'll, I'll fix it. I'll make it clear for you. Uh, let's not talk. I've read your work. Schnapps. <laughs> yeah. Schnapps. It's harder to write on, on, a, on glass, by the way, just so you know. Schnapps. S-H-N-O-P-S. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Those are the elements of life. The first two rows of the periodic table are the most important for life. Period. Maybe the first three rows. That's it. 
but these are the most these are the elements repeatedly found in in life forms on this planet. So let's take a look at proteins. Proteins have this really interesting, uh, these two interesting groups they have NH2, which we call amino. There's an extra bond here. Um, I'm going to put the, ex the bond that's not unattached, the yellow. They also have the, the, the molecule that we should all be used to by now. What is this? Carboxylic acid, not carbon dioxide, though it's not a bad guess because there's two oxygens, right? I understand why you would think it's carbon dioxide, but there's a hydrogen in there too, so it's, it's not. So it's carboxylic acid. Again, it has a bond that's not being used right now. So these are the two big components. There's a third component in an amino. Uh, so we, we can put these two together and we can make something called a monomer the monomer of proteins, you know, like the Lego block, right? The single, P, the single unit that we're gonna to put together to make a bigger unit. And we call it an amino acid. We call that an amino acid. That's the monomer for proteins. So you need to know that. I'm gonna go ahead and put an asterisk by it. You need to know how to, what amino looks like and what a carboxylic acid. You got to know that because you will get confused if you don't. I'm not going to ask you to draw it, but you should be able to identify it. So when we, when we look at amino acid, if we put it together, we'd have an N group, two hydrogens. So we have a, an, N, an amino side that's connected to a central carbon that's connected to a hydrogen, that's connected to, I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna make it special, it's gonna be called an R group here. All right, this R group can be one of 20 different side chains. We call this a side chain. Also a variable, okay, so the R group can be 20 different, you don't have to know all 20, you will in college, when you take biochemistry, you will in, in medical school. And to get into medical school, you gotta know the 20 amino acids, the 20 side chains and what they do or don't do. I don't know, where, where are you all coming from? Where are you coming from? We just got here. Wow, I don't know, it's not funny. All right, so then C, double bond, O, O, H. So that is an amino acid. Do you see why we call it an amino acid? Why do we call it an amino acid? Why do we call this an amino acid? Should I ask this a quiz question? Easy quiz question. Why do we call this an amino acid? Can we close the door? So this rude, those rude people in the back came in and didn't close the door. Yeah, why do we call it an amino acid? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it has the amino group. We call these groups, by the way, and a, and, a, and a carboxylic acid group. So this monomer has an amino group and a carboxyl group, or carboxylic acid group. Does that make sense? Why do we call it an amino acid group? Let's say again. I'll say again. Has an amino group. Look at it. Look at it. Has an amino group. You, you, you asked the question, right? So it's an amino group. And then a carboxylic acid group. So put it together, you get a what? Amino acid. It's just that easy. Now, look at your study guide. Look at your study guide. In your study guide, you have two examples of amino acids. I said there were 20. Some are really long and complicated. Some are acids. Some side chains are bases. 
Some have rings, some are long. In this case, they picked two. The two amino acids, that, the side chains that they picked are N, H2. See, this is the same, isn't it? And then they have one with the side chain, the R group is just an H. It's the simplest possible R group. You can't get simpler than that. So this amino acid is known as alanine. This is alanine. Why is it alanine? Because it has a side chain. The side chain is H. This R group here is H in this amino acid. So we call it alanine. Now, if we take the same thing, the same structure, the amino and the carboxylic acid part is the same. But this time, instead of an H, I know it's, con uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's not H. I shouldn't have put H. I don't even know what I'm thinking. I'm so sorry. I'm just, I'm just rotely writing without thinking. It's not an H. It is, thank you, CH3 is correct. It's a CH3. And then this one is connected to CH2. And then there's a sulfur on it. And there's a hydrogen that comes off the sulfur. And if you really want to draw it out, since I'm drawing that one out, let me draw this one out. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So you're saying that that one has CH3, but then you erase it and then put a C and then oh. All right. So what I said was that this is CH3. It is. There's three H's on a C. I just drew it out. Instead of just writing CH3, I just wanted you to see that there's three H's on there. And I wanted you to see that there's one, two, three, four bonds for this carbon. So this is CH2, see so one, two. It also has four bonds, one, two, three, four. But one of those bonds is not to hydrogen, it's to sulfur. And then that sulfur is also connected to hydrogen, yeah. That's right. The, uh, that's perfectly said. Yeah, the, the R chain determines the, the function, uh, the structure. It, it, it defines the structure, right? That's the difference in structure between these two. And it will also define a function. For instance, this amino acid known as cysteine has a sulfur group. This is the reason people with curly hair have curly hair. People that straight, with straight hair don't have, their hair isn't curly because they don't have a lot of this amino acid in their protein chain. If you put, use a lot of these Legos, you get real curly hair. You don't have a lot of these Legos, you have straighter hair. That's it. That's, it. Uh, that's one very clear example of a side chain determining of structure, which determines a function, right? So it's, it's, it's an interesting point. And you can imagine there's 20 of them. And that's, so you can put these together, and I'm going to go ahead and just put, uh, let me draw out this. I find it really fun to draw this one out. I don't know why. I'll tell you, in medical school, I had a Dickens of a time with biochemistry. But I did love it. I just... Mm, it was it was a struggle for me. I don't know why. I remember asking my professor, "Why is it so much trouble for me?" I I realized later it's because I realized later it's because I didn't recite enough. I was I was at my lowest energy state. But that was a, a lesson learned. So uh, you can draw it, or you don't have to. So each of these R groups, it's a lot. I didn't ask you to draw it. I'm just, you can if you want. I'm just, I'm just trying to make a point. So this is a, a protein is a polymer. 
the hair, can I borrow your hair because it's long? I mean, give me a long, it's like a this. This hair here, okay, it's real long, I think longish. This is, imagine a molecule, a single molecule, smaller than you could see with a microscope, put one after the other, attached to make something this long. And that, that hair is wrapped, that's a single strand of hair is a number of these molecules wrapped around each other like rope. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So, you know how, like, the people with curly hair, you said that they have more... Cysteine. Cysteine. So, when you flat iron your hair, does it just, like... It breaks the, the... I'll talk... I don't want to confuse you. It doesn't break the cysteine bond... The, uh, no. We will... No, it's a good question. Write it down, because I will be talking about it probably Monday. Because those are what we call intermolecular forces. But... If I start talking about it now, I'm going to have half the class just run out of here screaming. So let's, let's go ahead and just focus on this. So amino acids, we got to put them together. You can't make hair out of a bunch of little pieces of amino acids floating around. They ought to be connected, right? Rope doesn't work if they're not connected, if they're not one, one thing. So these are monomers. And by the way, I just wrote these. We're talking millions, you know, they could be just, I'm going to put dot, 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 okay, because this goes on. I don't know what the upper limit is, but there could be thousands in amino acids. In hair, for instance, there's likely, you know, people have, I've seen people with hair down to their ankles. How many amino acids is in, is in one strand? I don't know, but it's a lot. So, and again, each one, if you had, if this was, if every other one was a cysteine, then your hair would be curly. If you every, if there was no cysteine here, it would be straighter. All right. But let's go ahead and how do we put them together? Listen, it's a trick. It's a real simple trick. All biomolecules get put together, get, get made the same way. You know, life started as one thing. One lo lonely little thing in the middle of, I don't know what you'd call it, I mean, it would be a cell. One single cell in the middle of a soup of, of chaotic lightning and horrible conditions you can't even imagine, right? I can't imagine it. Something out of a sci-fi movie. And out there in the middle of all that, a single, I don't care if you think God came down and put his finger and made it happen, or if it happened on its own, none of my business. But bottom line is, in the ocean, in this soup, a single cell formed. All life came from that single cell. It should make sense to you that everything that we do, we share with all other life. Every living creature on this planet is related to us. We are related to them. We're essentially cousins, close cousins. I don't care how weird they look. I'd be a Obviously, some of us are closer than others. For instance, chimpanzees are our closest relatives. Why is that funny? They are. The 98% similar to us. That should, not be a, that should not be a surprise. And if people don't disagree, uh, I hope to convince you otherwise by the end of the year. At least for the curriculum, you better know it's true. In any case... 98% similarity. We share 50% of our DNA with bananas. She just was like, are we coming? 50% of our DNA we share. It's not a surprise. You have DNA in you that's related to bacteria. Right? So we are related to one another. So it should not surprise you that all the biomolecules are put together the same way. Because here's the thing about life. Life figured this out long before we were around. If it works, don't change it. There's nothing to f if it works, don't fix it, right? Fix it only if it needs to work. If, you, if it's a good way of doing it, keep using it. Do it. So this process is one of those things we call conserved. Conserved. This, a pro this process is called conserved. What does that mean, conserved? Say what? Saved. Saved. Right? It's a skill. It's a thing or it's, a, it, it's something that's been kept. 
saved over millions of years, billions, 3.4 billion years. Life has kept this because it works. That's an unimaginable amount of time. So it works well. We call this, there's two processes. When we build something, we call it synthesis. Synthesis. Does everybody agree that this is a... To build build, Synthesis means to make, to build. I say make. Did I say create? No. Humans don't create anything. We can't create or destroy anything. That's the first law of thermodynamics. Yeah, I mean, you never die, basically. Uh, it depends on what you... T- it's a long story. That's a complicated philosophical argument. I'm going to say it can lead to that if you under, right, under the right arguments, but let's not go there. <clears throat> that was scary. But yeah, no, that means we can't create it. We, like, I can change you. you could, uh, I could take a rabbit and kill it, and I could skin it, and I could take the meat... And I could turn the meat into burgers. I could eat the burgers. I could take the skin and I could make it into gloves. I can make the bones into pins and, and needles. Well, that's what we used to do. That's what humans do. You're, wear, you're wearing leather. Where did you think that leather came from? Somebody killed the cow and took the skin off the cow. They made you burgers that you ate last night or night before. Or some steaks. And they took the, the skin and they made you a, a pair of leather shoes. Uh, so we can, we can change something is my point. But we can't create the shoe. You can't go in out of nothing and grab a shoe out of it. We can't do that. So yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'm, so synthesis means make... What does the word dehydration mean to you? Yeah. Take away water. Take water coming out. Take away water. Everybody agree? Dehydration means take away. Water. Okay. So if we're going to put these together, by the way, we did it with. We did it with lipids. We're going to do it with every biomolecule. It's always the same. All we got to do is put these together. How do we put it together? Remembering that nitrogen is going to make three bonds. Carbon needs to make four. Can't make five. I can't just put them together. I say, oh, here, let's stick them together. It doesn't work that way. They're not glued together. They have to share electrons. So this is all full. This is all full. All these atoms have their full octet. So how do we get this one to bond with this one? What do we, must we do? Huh? Remove something. Something has to leave in order for us to replace the bond. Does that make sense? Okay. So what do you think we're, what do we, what do you think, based on the vocabulary that I just gave you, what do you think's leaving? Water. Water, correct. So we're going to put them together. We're going to put these together using water, by taking water out. Where are we going to take water out here between these two? Oxygen, hydrogen, okay. And what? And another hydrogen. So these are going to come out, and it's going to make H2O. And that's going to happen. And what's going to happen with the carbon is the carbon now has a bond that it can make. Nitrogen has a bond it can make. Guess what happens? They bond. And the same thing happened. Now we, same thing happens here. And here. And, oh, and here. All right. And each one of these, you make water. So by the way, just so you know, when you build muscle, when you're building muscle, uh, building amino acids into protein, you are literally making water. You're producing water that you pee out. Right? So when you're building muscle, 
lean muscle, anyways. Initially, what you see, if those of you that are going to the gym, you go to the gym and you start to break down muscle, the very first thing that happens is you gain weight. Your, your muscles swell. They'll swell. They'll gain weight because of water. But then when you put them back together, that water leaves and you lose weight. So you'll see your weight go up and down. Weight's not a great measurement of health and percent of composition of your body. Because if you're, you can be very muscular and in shape and be heavier, you can be thinner or lighter, less, less heavy, and be a higher percent fat and less muscle, which is not as healthy in many cases. So you have to consider that when you're thinking about weight. Weight is tricky. So anyways, putting them together, what we get is not, they're no longer, uh, they are amino acids, but they're not single monomers. They're now a giant polymer. And again, I'm only going to do a couple of these or just a few that you see here. Each one of the R groups, they could be the same R group. They could be two alanines together, two cysteines together, or they could be any one of the other 20. You can get a bunch of repeats or you can get a single one. Now, believe it or not, this is going to be very important. We'll see this again. So this C double bond O is no longer connected to OH. It's not a carboxyl group anymore. It's connected by a special type of bond to nitrogen, and then a carbon again, and then another R group, and then another carbon, another double. You see it, you see it, I hope you see the pattern here, because I don't want to draw too many more of these. Then another nitrogen, then a hydrogen, then another carbon, hydrogen, R group, and then there'll be an end. There'll be an end. I'm going to go ahead and put end this because I don't want to do it again. But this would keep going, obviously. Blah, 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 blah. There'll be an, an amino end, and there'll be a, carboxyl, a carboxylic acid end. Two ends. This is important with these types of biomolecules. We'll see why in a minute. So the next thing you gotta consider is that this, this bond right here is very special. This bond between this, the nitrogen. These are called, these are called peptide bonds. So they're known as poly, proteins are also known as polypeptides. Yeah. Yes, as long as the other person came back, I think we have one person out right now. So we know these as polypeptides. So peptide, so proteins are actually many polypeptides put together. Here's a protein, here's a protein that's many polypeptides wrapped around each other to form one single hair. Does that make sense? Your skin is protein. It's made of many polypeptide strands put together to make protein. That They get put together to make tissue, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a polypeptide. Those are proteins. One last thing about proteins, and then we're done with proteins, and today I'll let you review it and start, uh, start to uh, work on your lab if we have time. It's 10 o'clock. When are we out of here? 10.07? I'm going to play this back for you so you can see how wrong you are. All right, so the, I definitely judged you. All right, so polypeptide, peptide bonds. So the interesting thing here, among uh, many interesting things, another interesting point is you have two sides. What do you need to read, to, to communicate? Can I ask you something? Uh, when you're communicating, to communicate, Information. What do you need? All right, let's say you have knowledge. Let's say you have information. How do you communicate? The, how do you store it? How do you, how do you communicate? Huh? You, that's how you might say it. How do you, how do you pass it out? You think it, okay. All right, we write it down. We, we write it down. You're writing in your notes. 
you write it down from left to right, top to bottom, correct? You start writing from left to right. That's not true for everybody. In Arabic text, it's from right to left. I think it's top to bottom still, right? Top, right to left and then go down the page. In Chinese, I think, and don't quote me, but I think it's, it's top and go straight down. But they go, don't they go down? Yeah, like they go. Like I think it's some kinds of some. Remember, Chinese is not one language, right? There's Mandarin. And there's like I, I don't. I think there's like five different versions of, of Chinese. But anyways, the point is that you go straight down. Like you'll see symbol, 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 and they don't even use letters in the, in the old or version of Chinese language. They use symbology. They use symbols. And they, and they draw those pictographs, if you will. Uh, Babylonian text uses the same Sanskrit, uses forms of letters. Hold on a second before you go any further. Hold on. Interestingly, you don't have to write at all. Like you could do like the ancient Egyptians just draw, uh, carve or paint drawings. Like art could be languages. They could, wait, don't put anything like that. Did I use the word don't? You gotta just listen. Now stop talk, fidgeting. Don't move anything. Just, escucha. Escucha. Listen. So you, you can communicate, you can preserve knowledge in multiple ways. In Peru, the most interesting way I've heard of recording information is with knots in a string. So when the ancient conquistadores, the, the, the conquerors of the new world strode on ships to come to the new world and to get, find gold, they brought with them priests that focused on knowledge. Priests had a lot of respect for the Aztec and Peruvian priests, and what they found when they went into the ancient pyramids and various other knowledge, knowledge areas, libraries, they found libraries. The books were not written on paper. They weren't in stone. They were in, on strings, knots in strings that you could read. But you would read it top down, and it would be the knots would be on a pole, and they would be hanging there. And if you want to know what the what the crop yield was last year for the Empire of Peru, you would start reading the knots. So my, and they would not just add like in an abacus, right, where you would use an abacus to add, subtract, divide, and multiply. They could do all of it in knots on the string. Similar to what we have today with Braille, right? Where you feel bumps on a paper help you read or communicate. So knowledge, information, can be stored in various ways. Today, where the next level of storage is in quantum mechanics. We're gonna use electron status on whether, on whether, on whether, where the electron is in a position and tying it to another electron using quantum entanglement to store information in long term and be able to process information known as something called quantum computing. So that's the next various steps in our technology, technological development. The point is, ladies, gentlemen, that knowledge, information can be stored in tissue in cells, in your brain. And they're not knots or paper. They're based on this idea of directionality, having two sides, having differences in, t in the sides of a molecule allow you to store information. It can, yeah, that's, a, that's another story. Again, those are all very interesting concepts.